Hey all y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carrie, and this is where I talk about knitting, my tips, my tricks, my opinions, and my preferences. We are in the middle of a pandemic, and I have seen questions come up about, are my hand knits safe? Do I need to sanitize my knitting tools? What do I do? So in today's video, I'm going to try to answer some of those questions. If you're interested in finding out about disinfecting your knitting, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, and let's clean. I'm shooting this video because I did see questions on my knitting Facebook groups about handling hand knits and needing to disinfect do we need to disinfect our knitting needles and our craft supplies? And it's not something I ever really thought about before. We don't, I personally have never thought a lot about needing to clean my knitting needles. So I went on the internet, I started going down the rabbit hole of information, and I found out there's a dearth of information when it comes to the need to clean your knitting needles and how to clean your knitting needles. And I think there's so little information because there usually isn't a big need to clean our knitting needles. In the description box below, I am gonna have some links to some really good information I found about cleaning surfaces and disinfecting surfaces. So I really encourage you to look at those links and educate yourself about this because I am not an expert. All I'm sharing with you is what I have found from reliable sources on the internet, but I really encourage you to educate yourself about all of this because what I'm going to share with you today won't just apply to how to deal with cleaning your knitting needles. It should really apply to almost any surface you might come in contact with. So um, as always, I will have timestamps below in the description box if you want to skip around to any part of the video and let's do this. The greatest risk of contracting COVID-19 is from breathing in the virus. Um, basically, you know, if somebody sneezes, let's say, or coughs, 3,000 droplets are dispersed into the air. One of the reasons why we're being told to maintain a six foot distance from other people is so if they cough or they sneeze into the air, being six feet away from them lowers like your risk of breathing in those droplets that have the virus in them and you yourself getting infected. Now, of course, those droplets can end up on someone's hand. So, and then that person, they have the virus on their hand and then they touch something and that virus gets transferred to the surface of that something. And then you pick up that thing, right? Virus gets on your hand and then you touch your face. Can you get infected that way? Yes. And washing your hands is kind of key. If you go outside into the world, wash your hands before you go outside, wash your hands when you get back. And in between hand washing, try not to touch your face. Not touching your face is like so hard. Like it's so hard. Like you don't even realize how much you try, you touch your face during the day until you're told not to. And then you find out real fast. So actually that is tip number one. Before you start knitting, go ahead and wash your hands first. Give your hands a little washy-washy, 20 seconds with soap in hot water. And if you're like, well, how do I know if I've been washing my hands for 20 seconds? There's various songs that you can sing to yourself. Um, the ABCs are good. You can sing Happy Birthday twice. From what I've read, again, check the links below. But from what I've read, it appears as though the virus can live on non-porous surfaces like um, metal and plastic for up to three days. And I haven't seen how long it can live on wood. I've only seen cardboard and cardboard. It appears the virus will live on cardboard for a day. So tip number two is if you're at all concerned that your knitting tools might have virus on them that could infect you, don't touch them for two or three days. And then the virus will have died and they'll be perfectly safe. Really. But maybe that just isn't reassuring enough or you want to use your tools right away for your own mental well-being. You're like, nope, 
I want to disinfect them. I want to get some chemicals on these things and disinfect them. Okay, we're going to go over that next. All right, so when I decided to possibly clean and disinfect my knitting needles and my knitting notions, not a whole lot of information was out there, probably because it's not something that we need to do all that often. <laughs> I started to think about, you know, instead of how do I specifically clean my knitting needles, how do I clean the material my knitting needle is made out of? Because whether we're talking about a wood, a plastic, or a metal surface, how do I clean these surfaces? That was the approach that I looked at when considering this. When I And I first started with wood. The thing about a lot of the advice that I saw in terms of disinfecting wood was to use a vinegar solution. Um, basically 50% vinegar and 50% water. Okay, my daughter's home, so you might hear her in the background. Vinegar is a mild disinfectant. It will kill some viruses and bacteria, but as I researched specifically disinfecting for COVID-19, what I discovered was that vinegar is actually not an effective disinfectant. So if you can't use vinegar to clean your knitting supplies and kill COVID-19, what can you use? Well, one thing that you can consider absolutely is disinfectant wipes. These are very handy. You know that these this has the chemicals you need to take care of killing bacteria and viruses. However, if you're going to use disinfectant wipes, make sure that you read the directions carefully um, because it's not just a matter of Here's a quick two second wipe across the surface, boom, it's disinfected. Also on the label, you wanna make sure that you read carefully what surfaces are safe to use these types of wipes on. For example, this is, it says sanitizing. This product will not harm most surfaces, including acrylic, sealed fiberglass, and vinyl. For plastic and painted surfaces, spot test on an inconspicuous area before use. Do not use on unpainted wood. This is not going to be safe for wood knitting needles. It doesn't tell you why, it just says not to use them. What can you use on any surface where you don't need to necessarily worry quite so much? One thing you can always use is 70% isopropyl alcohol. This is very easy to find. You can find this at any drugstore. You can find this at any grocery store. Um, the nice thing about using isopropyl alcohol is it's generally safe on most surface based on what I have found on the internet. So links below. <laughs> I'm gonna say that 100, 100 times. Another thing that you can use to disinfect surfaces is a 10% bleach solution. Um, I will have a link below on how to mix that together. However, with bleach solutions, those have to be mixed up daily. Bleach solutions become ineffective after a day, so it's not something you can make a big batch of and then use for the next week. You have to mix those up each day, but it is a highly, highly effective disinfectant. Remember to never mix bleach with vinegar never mix bleach with ammonia, and never mix bleach with alcohol. Never, never, never. For ease and everything, I decided that I was just gonna go ahead and use the 70% isopropyl alcohol. So next up, let's talk about how to actually go about cleaning and disinfecting your knitting needles. Basically, there's three steps to cleaning and disinfecting any surface, which is one, clean, two, disinfect, and three, let it dry. Um, so cleaning all the surfaces is pretty much the same right here. You might be wondering why I've had this little sippy bowl of water, and that is to clean my surfaces. Now, um, I just have here a nice soft cotton dishcloth that I knitted up. Um, so just going to soak this in the soapy water Then I'm going to take my wood kneading needle and gently rub it down. The reason you want to clean first is if there is any gunk or oil or anything like that on your knitting needle, this will clean it off. The reason I'm using a cloth to wipe down my knitting needles and not just dunking them in the water is 
Wood is a porous material, so it will suck up that water and that could damage the wood. Once I've done cleaning it, then I go ahead and I dry that. Next, I'm gonna do my plastic needle. Now, I mostly work with interchangeable needles, so I wanna make sure that I don't get water down the shaft of this needle. That's one of the reasons I don't wanna just like plunk it in the water. <laughs> it could end badly. I wanna be careful not to get water down there. Brush that, go ahead and dry it. Right there. Next, this is an Addy Turbo Lace Needle. This is nickel coated brass that also has a coating on top of it. So it should be safe from any kind of like rust or tarnish. It's also why it's important to make sure that you dry this carefully. All right, so now that I've washed the needles, we can go to step two, which is to disinfect the needles. So I'm just gonna wet this cotton pad with that, and then gently rub my needle with the alcohol. You don't wanna just rub it and then wipe it immediately. The alcohol needs a chance to sit on the needle to kill any bacteria or viruses that are on the needle itself. Um, so about 15, 30 seconds of just sitting on the needle. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I'll do my metal needle. And now I'm gonna do my plastic needle. Doo -doo 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 -doo. All right, now what you wanna do is just let your needles dry. The thing with wood or bamboo needles is keeping them in good condition actually relies on using them. Um, the oils from your hand and the lanolin in wool helps to keep the wood nice and conditioned so it doesn't dry out and crack. However, you just wetted this, you just rub them with rubbing alcohol. These are all things that are very drying. So one more step that you may wanna do is to condition the wood. How you condition the wood though is very easy. You just need to rub the wood with some kind of wax. Beeswax is ideal. If you don't have beeswax on hand, you can also use cold cream. Although cold cream is kind of an old fashioned product, you may not have that um, in your bathroom for cleaning your face, but if you do have cold cream, that will work. It often has beeswax in it. The other thing you can use, however, is just wax paper. So um, I'm just gonna tear off a sheet of wax paper thusly, and then I'm going to take my knitting needle and just rub it with the wax paper. That's all you need to do. And that will help condition the wood and keep it nice and moisturized so that it doesn't dry out and crack. And something I did read online is it's not a bad idea to occasionally condition your wood needles this way. If your wood needles feel like they're slowed down a bit, that might be because they need a little bit of conditioning. So beeswax, cold cream, or wax paper is a really easy way to just moisturize your wood and keep them in nice, nice condition. Now, I've talked a lot about cleaning surfaces, your knitting needles, these same sorts of tips would apply to any notions. What about the hand knitting itself? Well, again, from my research, it appears as though the possibility of infecting somebody through fabric, which is what a hand knit is, is extremely low. But really, the way that you combat this is simply to wash your hand knits according to the label direction. You'll wanna do it at the warmest temperature possible for the fiber that you're using, but it's not something that appears like you have to overthink it a whole lot. And of course, also, viruses do not last forever. So if you're at all worried, just take the hand knitted item, put it after you've washed it, put it in a corner for a few days, and it'll be safe, or at least it should be safe. Again, educate yourself. Please read the links <laughs> that I've provided in the description box below because I am not an expert. I am not a medical professional. This is all just what I have found from what I believe are reliable sources. Ed and Carrie here. If you are tempted to clean your hand knits with bleach, we all probably know about getting that mystery ball of yarn and the way that you can test 
whether it's an animal fiber, a plant fiber, or a synthetic fiber, is to light it on fire? Well, you can do the same kind of test using bleach. Um, and bleach will dissolve acrylic yarn. It will destroy animal fibers. It's safe for cotton, but you will also bleach the color out of your cotton items. If you have found this video helpful, I hope that you'll give it a thumbs up and share it with anybody you think might benefit from it. If you'd like to reach out to me on social media, you can find that all down in the description box below. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell, which will let you know whenever I upload a new video. I hope you have a wonderful day, evening, weekend, weeknight, whenever you may be watching this, and I wish you good health. As always, happy knitting. Bye. Hey, Editing Carrie here. If you're wondering why you're suddenly looking at a glitter jar, that's because I'm doing something a little bit different at the end of my video than I normally do, and I thought this is just a really nice, relaxing image. If you want just a couple of minutes of chill time, check out the uh, craft and chill video that I put up, which is just this glitter jar. But anyway, when I started shooting this video, I just sort of babbled a little bit about the situation and I was originally going to just have it at the top of the video, but I decided instead to put it here because um, it's a little bit more personal, but also it's just something I wanted to share. If you stay tuned to watch this, thank you. And if you are like, no, I've had enough talk about the pandemic, I totally understand. Hey there, how you doing? How are you holding up right now as we deal with a pandemic? Um, I live in Los Angeles and last night, the entire state went under a stay at home order. Um, which in some ways sounds more dramatic than it really is. There's been a lot of, I don't even want to say the words, but I will. There's been a lot of concern that we're going under martial law. We're not under martial law right now. Basically, being under a stay-at-home order just means that we should stay at home as much as possible. We can go outside to walk our dog, get fresh air, but when we are outside, we need to maintain a six foot distance from anybody else that we might see who's also walking their dog, getting some fresh air, exercising, etc. Um, we can go outside, obviously, if we need to get groceries or go to the bank or get gas in our car. Getting gas in your car is a very important part of life in Los Angeles, okay? Um, it's not like we are just like under lockdown in our house, we can't get out. Um, it's not that extreme, but it is a mental toll. I will be honest. It's hard to believe that it's hard to believe that LAUSD closed down only about two weeks ago. That it's just, it feels like an entire month has gone by <laughs> since the schools shut down, but it's been two weeks. Um, I think, or has it only been a week? See, that's what I'm saying. Time is just like, Knitting, I gotta say, knitting, my crafts have really helped me through all of this. So um, the other thing that's really helped during this time is social media and technology. Um, I may not be able to go and see my friends and give them a hug right now, but we are able to chat, we're able to talk. Um, I do a workout, I'm in a hit workout class called Fit for Moms which has been wonderful since I started being a mom. I've been doing this since my daughter was four months old and it's just been a wonderful thing in my life. And <sighs> sorry, when the classes were canceled, it was like, oh man, I was down about that. I was really down when we had to cancel our group classes, but you know what? The owner, the owner of Fit for Mom, she figured it out. She got Zoom and she started setting up classes for us to do on Zoom and 
having not just the ability to continue with my workouts, which is so important, not just for my physical health, but my mental health, but also to see the other moms that I have been spending very early Tuesday and Thursday mornings with for almost three years now was just like, okay, my peeps are still around. We haven't, we're not losing each other. But the other thing that helped me through all of that has personally helped me through all of this is knowing that the changes in the routine and our family's behavior has been done to help our community. That we are in the middle of a pandemic. COVID-19 is not just influenza. Um, as best we know from the limited data we have, it does have a higher mortality rate than influenza. And even though I'm probably at lower risk for serious complications from this virus, the fact of the matter is I could become infected. Maybe I just have a really bad case of a flu-like disease. But what about people around me? What if I came in contact with someone who is immunocompromised or is elderly or has asthma or is diabetic? There's any number of pre-existing conditions a person can have that puts them at a higher risk of mortality with COVID-19. And I would not want to unintentionally um, transmit that virus to somebody who may have a much more adverse reaction than I might. So reminding myself that really making the social distancing behavior changes was really about helping my community helped a lot. You know, sometimes when it, during difficult times, it really helps to remember that we are part of a community and that our actions, our positive actions can have a positive contribution to society. Maybe at the end of all of this, a little glimmer of a silver lining, whatever silver lining you might be able to find during a pandemic, is that we remember that we live in community and that when you're in a community, it's about helping take care of one another. So...